This is the Google Pixel 6, and this is the Google Pixel 6 Pro. And these two phones represent perhaps the biggest year-over-year -year upgrade I've seen in a long time. Let's go hands-on. Hey, right off the bat, let's just get something out of the way. Google did something unusual with both of these phones, something that most phone makers don't, and that's announcing these phones months in advance. Both of these phones got announced back in August, but here I have them in the flesh, and I've got to say, they are a beaut. But let's get down to some basics. Both phones have a body made of 100% recycled aluminum, and the bodies are IP68 rated for water and dust resistance. But let's get to the defining feature, and that is this camera bump. Google said it wants to feature its camera technology, and it wants to stand out from other camera bumps. So as opposed to going with a square off to the side, it went for a camera bump stripe right across horizontal. Now, you might compare this to Robocop or the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica, but in person it looks like someone took a black mineral, cut, shaped it, polished it, and put it on the back as a camera bump. In reality, it's just a camera bump, but no more wobbles. On the Pixel 6, this camera strip houses a wide and ultra-wide camera and more on both of them in a moment. On the Pixel 6 Pro, that camera strip houses the same wide, same ultra wide, but adds a brand new telephoto camera. And again, more on all this in just a moment. Then there are the sides of the phone. On the Pixel 6, the sides have a matte finish. And on the Pixel 6 Pro, the sides have a polished finish, hinting at its premium ambitions. On the front of the Pixel 6 is a 6.4 inch display, while the 6 Pro has a 6.7 inch screen. The screen on the Pixel 6 Pro curves around the edges slightly, whereas the screen on the Pixel 6 is flat with thin bezels. Both are covered in Gorilla Glass Victus and both have an in-screen fingerprint reader. The Pixel 6 has a full HD plus display with a 90 hertz high refresh rate, while the 6 Pro has a quad HD display made from LTPO, low temperature polycrystalline oxide technology that can adjust from 10 hertz up to 120 hertz. This gives you smoother, more responsive performance while saving your battery. And it's similar to what we've seen on the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro. The brain in the brand new Pixels is not supplied by Qualcomm. In fact, these phones have the first ever custom designed Google chip and it's called Tensor. And it provides 80% faster performance than the Pixel 5. Tensor was born out of Google wanting to go farther with its software and its computations. The camera bump on the back of the phone defines the design, but Tensor defines the Pixel. It allows for on-device AI, which means better speech recognition, faster image processing, which more on that in a second. Oh, and by the way, I did ask Google if Tensor would only be limited to the Pixel, like would we see it on other devices? They didn't want to answer that question, but they did say that Tensor is not a one-off product. Okay, so let's talk about these cameras and let's start with the main camera. It has a wide angle lens and it has a brand new sensor. This is the largest sensor ever on a Pixel phone and it has 50 megapixels. But Google uses pixel bidding, combining those megapixels together to create 12.5 megapixel photos. All this means is it's gonna be better performance in low light, it's gonna result in brighter photos with better image detail. Oh, and by the way, Google claims that this new sensor allows for 150% more light than the sensors on the Pixel 5. There's also a new ultra wide camera with a 12 megapixel sensor and a 114 degree field of view. And then there's the Pixel 6 Pro and it has a telephoto camera with four times optical zoom. It uses a periscope design to lay the lens horizontally inside the phone and Google says that the sensor on this telephoto camera is bigger than the main sensor on the Pixel 5. 
Around the front is an 8 megapixel selfie camera on the Pixel 6 and a wider angle selfie camera with an 11.1 megapixel sensor on the 6 Pro. But if there's one thing Google Pixel phone cameras are known for, it's computational photography. And Google designed the Pixel cameras to be more equitable when it comes to complexion. For the past 18 months, Google partnered with photographers, directors, and cinematographers, DPs like Kira Kelly or colorists like Alex Bickle, who are known for their beautiful depictions of communities of color. And they worked with them to improve the algorithms on these cameras. And they did that in two ways. And the first is detection. And they want to be able to identify a face no matter how light or dark it is, and no matter how complex the lighting is. And the second way are the aesthetics of that image. And what they did is they worked with engineers to improve nuances to the midtones and undertones, especially in people with darker skin. A theme behind Google's approach to designing the new pixels was to make them work well for more people, a variety of people, people with different skin colors, people with different speech patterns. But being Google, there's more. First, the phones run Android 12, which is full of customizations, allowing you to make the phone to your like, to your aesthetics. And within that, there are a bunch of unique software additions for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Now, I do not have time to go through each of these, but I do want to talk about three. And the first is called waiting time. And what this does is let you know the time of day when you're calling a business where you won't be put on hold the longest. The next one is called Direct My Call. And this uses Google Assistant to work its way through the automated prompts of a phone call until it reaches a human being. That sounds pretty cool. When it comes to photos, there's a neat new tool called Magic Eraser, which lets you remove people and objects and things from the background of your photo. Rest in peace, you photo bombers. But let's round things out by talking about battery life and 5G. Both phones support sub-6 5G and the Pixel 6 Pro and an upgraded version of the Pixel 6 also support millimeter wave 5G, you know, the really fast 5G that's not widely available. Uh, Google promises a one day battery life when using 5G and both phones are equipped with 30 watt fast charging, but in the tradition of phone companies all around the world, when there's fast charging on the phone, there's no fast charger in the box. In fact, if you want that, you're gonna have to buy it separately. And that brings us to pricing. The Pixel 6 is gonna cost $599 and come with 128 gigabytes of storage. And the Pixel 6 Pro is gonna start at $899 and come with 128 gigabytes of storage. That's pretty good pricing. I mean, I was expecting it to be higher. I promise you there is so much more I did not get to talk about when it comes to these phones, but a lot more of that is in my written first look on CNET, so check that out. Also, if you're interested in pre-ordering either phone, check out the link in the description. But now, I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro? Is there one you're leaning towards? Huh? This one or that one? And is there stuff that you were hoping that Google would add to these phones that they didn't? Throw your thoughts in the comments. All right, let's magic erase a little bit here. Why is Celso in the background of every one of my shots? It's really creepy. He's like filming me the whole time. I don't know, I'm just around now. Um, you want me to do a clean one where I'm not around?